Credit fraud, bank fraud at a car dealership, and how to protect yourself from it. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? The amazing Elizabeth is here to my right. You have arrived at the home of super high intensity training for car buyers, and today we're reacting to our good friend and an amazing attorney working on behalf of car buyers, Mr. Dan Whitney in Maryland. The video he puts out on dealer shenanigans, all of them, they're outstanding. We'll be doing some joint shows with Dan Whitney in the not distant future, and I encourage you to visit his channel and subscribe there too. The link is on the screen here and will be easy to find in that description box down below. Yeah, Dan Whitney's awesome. As our followers know, the Homework Guy channel prepares car buyers with homework and research to do before the sale. And if you're new here, you need to know that there are tons of videos on our channel covering car buying strategies and everything a car buyer needs to know when it comes to paying for our car with cash or how to avoid contract fraud at a car dealership. If you're not already one of the hundreds of thousands of subscribers, you're going to want to hit that notification bell so you never miss a thing and get hosed on a car deal again. You've come to the best place you can when it comes to getting car buying advice online. Keep in mind as we watch this video that dealership finance offices quite often find themselves in a situation where a car loan isn't likely to get done. And the income on the part of the buyer is a big reason why a car loan doesn't work, oftentimes. So, what does the finance manager do? Well, some of them decide to cheat, just as the finance officer does in this video, and he manufactures a lie, fudging the income numbers and commits bank fraud, credit fraud, just to get a loan put through. Well, he's breaking the law. By the way, the settlements that Dan Whitney gets for his clients, and you've seen some of our reaction videos, I spoke with Mr. Whitney about this. It's in the Consumer Protection Act and other provisions and statutes, the Whitney Law Firm charges their attorney fees directly to the dealer. And that's something for all of you to know as well. If you're looking at hiring a consumer based attorney, the attorney fees get paid by the dealer if they did indeed defraud you. That's good news for any of you because if you do need that legal help, it can get expensive dealing with an attorney. Well, not in this case. So anyway, yeah. legal fees are paid for by the dealer. Well, let's roll this video by Dan Whitney to see how this situation turns out. Hi, this is Dan Whitney with the Whitney Law Firm in Towson, Maryland. Today we're going to talk about the issue of car dealer fraud in connection with customer credit applications. So in this uh, discussion, I'm going to share a story where a car dealership, uh, this was a recent case, a car dealership uh, magically promoted uh, one of my clients from being a stylist, a hairstylist, Magic. making $12,000 a year to an assistant manager making $36,000 a year in the period of about three hours. <laughs> uh, now, of course, if they were really able to do three this, times uh, the it would be magic. Customers would flock from across the United States, at least, to come get a piece of this magic and uh, get instant promotions making $24,000 <laughs> more dollars a year. Of course, it's not magic. It's called uh, bank fraud, credit fraud, uh, car dealer fraud, all those things, and it happens all the time. Uh, but the way it arises is this. A customer comes in, they want to buy a car, they write down uh, what their income is on the credit application, the finance manager sees it, they know based on their experience, $4,000 a month is simply not enough money to get a loan here. So very often what they will do is they will change that 4000 up to a 5000 because they know based on their experience, bank x y and z if we put the income here you're going to get the loan approved now what happens is it's all good for the moment when the person sitting across the table um, doesn't know this is happening usually and they end up walking out with keys in their hand and they get the car they want and they're very happy and they're also financially screwed right because the payment is much bigger than what will fit in their uh, budget and we did a video just a short time ago, if our guys would put it on the screen here, uh, dealer calls and wants you to bring the car back. Well, salesmen and dealers always say that it was the customer who lied about their income, and that's why the car had to come back and everything fell apart. Well, that's not always true. In fact, I recall many uh, situations where I had finance manager come back and tell me on a given car deal that, hey, the, the customer doesn't have enough income. Uh, we've got to come up with some more income for them. It's like, we've got to come up with some more income for them. <laughs> now, they're not I talking about giving you free money. They're talking <laughs> about making inflated money. <laughs> yes. The little magic here that they're yep. talking about. Of course, what goes up must come down. 
And what ends up happening is that monthly payment, they simply cannot afford over time. Maybe they can afford it for a couple months, but eventually it catches up to them. Uh, and sometimes it catches up to them right away, as you'll see in this case I'm about to discuss. But what happens is the fraud that occurs when the finance manager inflates that income fraudulently uh, ends up resulting in a customer uh, being loaned an amount of money that they did not qualify for legitimately. Exactly. And they take on a debt that they simply cannot afford. And what happens is they get stuck with that debt and loans these days, you know, at least 36 months. You might be going up to 84 months and a lot of them are, you know, 60, 72 months. So the, the victim of this, the customer, is going to be living with its consequences for a very long time. And it can often result in repossessions occurring. I've had a case like that because uh, they simply can't pay the note that they shouldn't have qualified for. Um, and it can have tremendous negative consequences. Now, um, it doesn't always end badly. Uh, sometimes if you catch them doing this, uh, it can actually end pretty well uh, for the customer. So in a recent case I had, uh, which involves credit application fraud, a 55-year-old woman went to a local car dealership around here, and she needed some work done on her car. So she brings it in, drops it off. She's sitting in the waiting room at the service facility at the dealership. By herself. Car dealership. By herself. And you guys, uh, always be suspicious of dealers right now when you bring your cars in to be worked on because a dealer attempting to steal a car from a customer and making up all this garbage about what's wrong with the vehicle, like it's not drivable, it's not safe, your car's right. going to blow up, all that nonsense, just to A, steal your trade, and secondly then, to put you into the sales process in the dealership. It's nonsense. And she's sitting there for a while, and then the service advisor comes out and says, listen, Miss so-and-so, uh, I've got some bad news. Your brakes are horrible, your uh -huh. car's in bad shape, and you're simply, uh, you should not drive this car. It's in such bad shape, you could die on the way home. He not actually says something drive. outrageous like that. Your car's not safe. If you drive it, you might die. Now, my client happened to be a physically disabled woman, and she... Um, had some issues and she was particularly susceptible to false uh, false statements made to her uh, that she just simply would tend to believe them. She's a a, um, a trusting soul, which is not good when you go to a car dealership. <laughs> yes, exactly. So she listens to this, she takes it to heart. Many people like myself and many others would say, you know what, I don't care, just fix the car, I'm leaving and I'm out of here. But she uh, was concerned that this was true. So she says, listen, what can I do? I can't afford to pay for all these repairs that I need to do. And the service advisor, uh, and I'm sure there's a, a, a warm spot in hell waiting for him. He <laughs> says, listen, yes, everything's going to be is. fine. What are you paying now? I pay $200 a month. Well, talk to my guy in sales, and he should be able to get you into a new car for the same amount. She says, really? Yes, really, he's really good. She says, okay, let's... Every time somebody said that somebody in the car dealership was really good, those were always yeah. the biggest con men in the dealership. Always. So the really good guys are the con men in the car business. And the truth of the matter is that you cannot really get a car loan for 200 bucks a month at all on Period. anything. So 200 is is not even a doable number for anybody. Let's give it a shot. So she... Uh, goes and talks to the guy in sales and she speaks with him. She fills out a truthful credit application. And sure enough, what happens is uh, she provides her true information. It's a long process and she's sitting there. The salesman takes her credit app, goes, talks to a manager in the back and comes back. And he says, great news. The credit fairies great have news. done their magic. Now, of course, what does that mean? There are no credit fairies and there is no magic. It's credit fraud <laughs> is what he's talking about. But she did not know that at the time. The credit she was just happy. She wasn't going to die driving this supposedly dangerous vehicle back to her home from the dealership. So they get her into the finance manager's office and they have her sign a bunch of, uh, DocuSign a bunch of forms. And of course, DocuSign um, is an extremely tricky tool that the dealers use because very often they zoom in on the screen, you're docu-signing things, you don't even know what it is. Um, and it's just really a recipe for fraud and disaster is what, is what the uh, docu-sign and e-signatures are. And they love it when you don't know what you're signing. Exactly. So docu-sign is, a, to me, a red flag anytime a dealer is using that 
and then especially the zooming in on the signature because it does take the customer completely out of knowing what they're signing for. And in this case, this lady being a trusting soul, yeah, I could see where she made some huge mistakes here. Trusted the wrong people. But that's, there's more to be discussed about that uh, at another time. So she docu-signs, uh, but before she signs it, she says, listen, I want to make sure my payments are $200 a month, right? Don't you worry, Ms. So-and-so. Yes, they are. She says, okay. So she signs what she needs to sign. So she leaves the dealership. She gets home. They gave her a USB, which is what happens at a lot of dealerships now. Instead of giving somebody carbon copies or copies, they give them a USB with scans uh, or you know PDFs of 10 different documents or so. So Liz, real quick, why would a dealership give a customer a USB instead of the printed documents? Well, one, not everybody of a certain age even has their own computer to check it out. And two, they probably won't look at the documents to see what they say on them. They can also lose you the also, USB. You know how often we lose those darn things? <laughs> yes. They're tiny. It's floating around in my purse somewhere. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. So, so customers could easily lose them, and then they're unlikely to look at them. Whereas a printed document, they'll probably leaf through that thing. So, right, file it away somewhere. Yeah. USB is um, one of the one of the things that you absolutely got to look through. And smartly, this lady actually popped her USB into the computer and took a look at it. So she gets home and she's thinking about it. And she says, you know, I should probably think about what's on these USBs. She doesn't have a computer. She goes to the library, plugs it in, takes a look. There you go. To her surprise, on the retail installment uh, sales contract, her monthly payments are $530 a month, starting Boom. in 60 wow. days. Not 200 bucks. She's shocked. She looks through the rest of the documents. To her surprise, she sees her original credit application. I'm a stylist. I make 12000 a year. But then she sees the other credit application, which says, I'm an assistant manager and I make $36,000 a year, which of course is not the case. So she doesn't know what to do and she does some, some research and she finds us and she gives us a call and she tells us what happened and we meet, shows me the USB, we see the credit applications and right away it's obvious this is fraud. Uh, and they have taken advantage of this poor woman and tricked her into taking a loan that she absolutely cannot afford. There's no, just no two ways about it. She cannot afford to pay $550 a month when she makes $12,000 a year. It's not what she wanted. It's not what was represented. It's not what she agreed to. It's wrong. It's illegal. It's all those things. So what did we do? Of course, file a lawsuit, sue the dealership, and uh, it gets to their attention rather quickly. There's not a whole lot they can say in the situation when you've got the original credit application, then you've They're got busted. a fraudulent one. Obviously, she didn't tell the truth and then lie on another one. Uh, it's mm -hmm. the finance guy that did it. So we filed a lawsuit, and fortunately, we were able to work it out where um, not only did we cancel the transaction, uh, her trade-in, we were able to get her trade-in back. And she the car that's unsafe to drive, oh, they right. got back. Okay, suddenly there's nothing wrong with it. She had owed about $8,000 on it, and we were able to get enough money back where not only she got the trade, she got cash back, and we were able to get the trade paid off um, so she didn't have to worry about her car payments anymore uh, because they, they paid a premium because they got caught and they wanted confidentiality. Way to stick and, it to um, the crooks. And it was able to work out pretty well for her, and of course they ended up paying my attorney's fees as happens in literally every case uh my dealer clients pay no that's what we said earlier we use Bingo. the consumer protection act um and other statutes to have uh the dishonest dealer end up paying my fees and it worked out pretty well but the reason it worked out well is because we were able to catch them with the false credit app and the uh the real credit app and obviously the two didn't go together so if you should ever find yourself in a situation where you sit back and you realize, huh, I make X, but my payment is here and something just doesn't seem right. What should you do? What you should do is this. You should, one, look through the documents that the dealership gave you. Exactly. Is there a credit app? If so, look at it. Is the income on there accurate? Um, and of course, it most likely will not be. If it's not, you should contact the bank. Ask the bank to send you all of the documents that the dealer sent to them and see what credit app was sent to them. Of course, as always, review the um, finance contract that the bank was sent against the paperwork you were given at the dealership to see 
if uh, any numbers were changed, any signatures were forged. Um, but if the income is just out of line and it's not your real income and now you're stuck in this loan that you cannot afford with these payments that are too high, that's something that uh, obviously some fraud has occurred and you should not have to be held responsible for dealing with that payment or that loan which was obtained fraudulently. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you would want to find a consumer attorney and give them a call. Uh, you'd also want to put the bank on notice and say, listen, bank, uh, I looked at my credit app, the dealership lied right about my income, I don't make X, I really make Y, uh, and it's a bad loan. And you put them on notice, which uh, creates an opportunity to end up bringing a cause of action, not only against the dealer, but also against, against the bank. Because if the bank knows this is a fraudulently obtained loan and they insist uh, upon trying to collect on it, uh, that opens the door to causes of action independently uh, against them, which can be very helpful in getting these things resolved, getting the car bought back, canceling the contract, and working the deal out. So I hope this has all been uh, interesting and helpful. If you should find yourself in a situation like this in Maryland with credit application fraud, uh, please feel free to call me um, uh, or go to our website, WhitneyFirm.com, and send in something through the site. We offer free consultations always and uh, I'd be more than happy to look at it. So I hope this has been good. If uh, you have any other questions, please uh, leave a comment, or if you'd like to see another video, uh, leave a comment about that, and I would be happy to uh, make a video on whatever topic uh, I can that's requested. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much. I appreciate you watching. Take care. All right, so that was yeah. Mr. Dan Whitney with Whitney Law Firm, and a lot of good stuff. I want to capture just a couple of points there. And that's why I didn't interrupt him at the end because he was just like covering he was on all, a fire, man. He was covering all the bases, <laughs> wasn't he? All right. So, you guys, when you go home, even after you've looked at your contracts, you know, before you sign them and everything else, when you go home, always look at your documents a second time. So, this is how this lady ends up catching the dealership. But as he said, get a hold of your bank, ask them to send you also their documents. You can verify. And you know what? If there's fraud, get a hold of a consumer attorney. And as Dan pointed out, with the uh, Consumer Protection Act and other statutes that are out there, the dealer ends up paying the attorney fee. So it's very worthwhile doing this. Boy, I'll, I'll tell you what, for me, uh, I'm not a Sue happy person, but I absolutely love to see the crooks pay the price for this. And you know what? There should be some, uh, we'll have some conversation with Dan Whitney about this. There should be some follow up on this uh, to bring legal charges against them as well. Because when these guys are doing this, I tell you what, um, you or I commit fraud and do this uh, out on the out on the street without being a dealership and having all these politicians who are covering your bag. Well, I'll tell you what, folks like this should be doing time behind bars. I'm curious what you, our viewers, think. Please comment down below if you agree with that. Anything else, uh, Liz, that you want to add to this? I just have two really practical tips, especially if you're someone who's a little older um, and perhaps a bit more trusting. A, bring a friend with you to the dealership. And bring somebody. You can bring someone younger than you who is maybe savvy on certain technologies. It might help you, you know, get through the waters a little better. And then secondly, if you're going to fill out a credit application at the dealership, take out your smartphone, snap a picture of it before they take it away from you, just in case they don't give you that, that one back. You have it to compare later. Exactly. All right. Awesome stuff. <clears throat> Make sure you go to Dan Whitney's channel. We'll link it here again. Make sure you go to his channel and subscribe there as well because he does all kinds of shows on car related stuff. Good guy to learn some stuff from. You'll see him here on our broadcast uh, in the not distant future. If you appreciate this reaction video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy and look for us on any of your favorite social media platforms out there. And there's a list here on the screen. If you're new here, as Kevin mentioned, make sure you check out all the other videos we have. We've reached over 45 million people now, and you may as well benefit from all the content that they've seen too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, well, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see here will be easy to find in that description box down below. No problem if you can't do a tip. The best way to help us is to share this video with your family and friends so they can get just as lucky as you. And then encourage everyone to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you get all the notifications and then you don't miss a thing. The entire Homework Guy team is here to represent you, the car buyer, and that's exactly what we do. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock. I'm Kevin Hunter, the Homework Guy, here with the amazing Elizabeth. We, we gotta, gotta go. go.